he was one of those quiet, subtle men that did things behind the scenes. He was always involved in youth sports. He was, I believe he was involved before I was even involved. Sonny was the nicest person. I never seen him get mad, nothing bothered him. You can be the president of the 500 and stand up at all the banquets and, and be the face of the 500, but if you don't have those behind the scenes people that are consistently working on fields, umpiring games, working concession stands, um, we don't run. <laughs> we need those people and that, that's what Sonny Varney did. Practicing down there, he's down there all the time with his team, cleaning the field, all the things that we used to do back then, he was always there. He was very, very good at constructive criticism. You know, if there was something that you needed to work on, the team needed to work on, one of the other kids needed to work on. He'd have no problem saying it, but not in a way that was beating you down. Um, and he, he wasn't the person that would, you know, jump up and down, oh, great game, great game. It, that just wasn't him. He was very analytical about the whole thing. Sonny actually coached prior to Mark coming through the program, which is a great sign of a true volunteer, um, and then when Mark got to a certain age, Sonny decided not to coach because he wanted other people to coach his son. So it wasn't about, I'm here because of my boy playing. Sonny was there for the cause. And that's why Sonny Varney goes into the Hall of Fame. There are men, <clears throat> excuse me, there are men who get involved because their kids play there are men who coach to coach their sons or daughters. And there are men who start their volunteerism when their kids begin playing youth sports and end when their kids finish. And then there are men like our next inductee, Sonny Varney. Nominated by fellow Hall of Famer Jerry McCarthy, Sonny represents the true volunteer. Nothing about Sonny was loud or flashy, yet he was a presence that commanded respect in a subtle, non-conspicuous kind of way. There was no limit to what Sonny wouldn't do. Not only would he coach, but he'd work concessions, umpire, clean the park, maintain fields, all the behind the scenes details that need to be done in order for a quality program to exist. If it weren't like men, like, if it weren't for men like Sonny Varney, where would we be? Sonny was a role model and a presence in the lives of many people here tonight, and he has connections with many of the 1988 players and many fellow Hall of Famers. Ironically, the last time I saw Sonny and was able to say hello to him was in this very gym while he was attending a basketball game of his grandson, Kevin. Sonny Varney passed in 2011, but we are very fortunate to have his very proud family here with us tonight. Please welcome on behalf of Sonny, his wife, Betty Varney. I spent a while thinking and trying to imagine what Sonny would say if he were here. Probably the first thing he would say is, who the heck nominated me, and boy, am I going to get even. Um, what I do know, that he was very proud of being a third generation citizen of Farmington. He loved growing up here. Um, he loved helping his mom in the dress shop, wrapping Christmas presents. Uh, in making bows at Christmas time. But his love of sports went all through his life. His, he played basketball in the Army. When he got out of the Army, he came home and we started our family. And he decided he still wanted to teach children how to play ball. Uh, he started, well, actually he wanted to teach boys how to play basketball the right way. Uh, so he began volunteering at the 500 Boys Club and really was inspired by the youth, uh, the dedication of the, the parents, the coaches. He felt like it wasn't just him, he was part of a community. And he really loved that part. And he was so proud of the boys that, not the star players, 
but the boys that played and the, the kids that played and made a, a play that won the, team, won the game. He, those are the players that he really, really loved. Uh, he, the, the team of 1988, that team pretty much grew up in our house. There wasn't a dinner time that didn't, that didn't go that we didn't have Stevie or, or Scott or somebody at the dinner table. And a lot of discussions went along, and it wasn't just sports. We learned a lot about women and arguments and all that kinds of things around the dinner table. We learned where Betty put her cookies, and uh, just, just a lot of fun and ridiculing and things like that. Uh, he would want everyone to know how much he wanted to be here, how much he appreciated all the support he got from Farmington, and especially the kids. He really loved his boys and, uh, and really felt supported through Farmington. Thank you.